you're gonna be in a great mood all day because you're gonna be slapping your troubles away with a slap chop. You love salad, you hate making it. Take the stringy celery, take the carrots, salad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fascinating time. It's a fascinating time to be in agriculture. There is this globalization or internationalization of the food supply. What does this globalization mean? What kind of an ethic, what kind of a value system drives globalization? Our Cómo existe o cómo se relaciona la globalización con el hambre. Why are some people eating and others not in a world of plenty? And instead of getting uh, food from, you know, barely a hundred countries, we now get uh, food from 180 countries in the United States. When you talk to people over the end of end of this great economic system, you get a very different answer. Hunger is a question of justice. That is why the current globalization approach to food is questioned by many. The job of, of any progressive movement is not to be intimidated. There is no law of nature or law of history or police force or anything else that can stop people from uh, uh, organizing sufficiently so that they take over the political system. Pour 
Je suis Presque tout le monde, tout le monde fait là tout. Il y a tout le monde là dans tout, mais nous, nous pas petit terre. Malgré ça, nous pas mais nous ne pas petit terre. Je suis même Je suis même Je suis petit Je suis même Je suis même Je suis Je suis même Je suis Je suis je ne Bois, maïs, banane, yam, patate, tout ce qui est net ici. Nous faisons. Pas bon ici, depuis, depuis nous, c'est comme ça. Nous ne pouvons pas jamais nous aider, nous faisons rien. C'est tout à coup. Ça, nous ne pouvons pas jamais nous avantage. Moi, je suis même, je suis six petites. Je ne peux pas jamais nous aider à l'école. Je suis très dénaté pour me payer l'école de mon Égal, même les jours de bas, quand il est là, même si nous sommes depuis ce bateau. Nous n'avons pas de côté pour nous passer. Bon, je bon, ne grand. Mais même j'ai deux ans, je n'ai pas l'école. Oui, je pris sur l'économie là pour grand, mais je n'ai là. Pour l'économie, je suis arrivé dans le 6e, je suis dans le Tellement cher là, du loup pour moi. Je suis arrivé trois fois, je suis l'école, je suis en campagne deux ans. Pour me démontrer aussi, je suis pas douce pour moi. Comme étant des papa, le petit petit n'est pas l'école. C'est son entrée à vous C'est Nous travaillons avec courage, nous avec pont et à nous travaillons. Mais ce qui veut dire que c'est Eti Agri, c'est Eti Grain, Eti Côte là qui tout happy, tout. Depuis qu'on n'a pas bon, tout le monde chita. Ok? Moi, je vis mon sacrifice. Je suis sacrifié pour mourir. Je ne peux pas arriver. Vous comprenez? Pour me faire manger. Je ne sais pas si je suis manger.
Ya estoy curado, anestesiado, ya me he olvidado de ti. Hoy me despido de tu ausencia, ya estoy en paz. Ya no te espero, ya no te llamo, ya no me engaño. De que hoy vamos a entrevistarnos aquí en la Junta de Buen Gobierno en Oventí. Chiapa, de los altos de Chiapas. Como los zapatistas, pues siempre somos este, campesinos, somos trabajadores del campo. Nosotros hemos tratado de luchar cómo mejorar nuestro, nuestro comida y nuestra pobreza. Hay muy pobre, pero pobre, totalmente. Bueno, aquí hay gente todavía sí come, que no tiene hambre, pero sí, no hay, no es alimentación nutritiva. Se cosecha, se manta, no, no se cosecha la tal singular, se vende, el mayoreo, pero muy barato. ¿Por qué? Porque el gobierno mexicano pues están explotando más la los indígenas, pero hay, hay este, personas, hay familiares que no tiene terreno, no hay donde puede trabajar. Como hay terreno en otros lados, otras partes, pero no puede utilizar, están controlados por el gobierno. No hay donde se puede sacar su cosecha. Solo que trabajen, salir afuera. Pella, 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 flintón de. Pella, 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 con. For Africans. Uh... Uh, at least uh, all the, the billions of people who live on less than a dollar a day. Um, you can't tell me, uh, you can't go and tell them honestly that globalization has been good, <laughs> has been good, has improved their standards of living. It hasn't, it's clearly impoverished them. Hapa nimekuja leo kusikisa mkutano ya chama cha Kusto. Hapa kwetu watu wako na jaa kabisa. Shauri tulipada majani chai cha bayote. Kwa hivyo bahari ya kurima ni hakuna. Tunategemea hiyo chai tu. Kwa hivyo watu wana jaa kabisa. Africa is impoverished and it's impoverished by the economic system. Uh, which sucks all the mineral resources, the wealth, out of the continent and transfers it to, you know, to different parts of the world. And one of the worst things, I think, about economic globalization is it impoverishes many people um, in order to improve the living standards of very few. Kwa hipi, tukaona KTDA hatujui walitoka upadi gani, hata ujui majani yake ni gani. Wanatupatia pesa pila wanapenda.
ilikuwa sisi watu wa uzoreti na wakati uzoreti ilikwisha kukaingia injenzi mambo yakaharibikia hapo kutoka wa sasa na ukisema kuna pesa inaitwa asasi sijui asasi hata kwa Kiingereza hata ni nini asasi hatujui ni nini na tukiangalia kwa kitabu tunaona ni pesa nyingi imelala pale na hajulikani hiyo pesa ni nini kuharibika sababu vile tunaendelea na wao ndio wanatunyonya saidi Everybody is connected by food, everybody eats. Globalization is completely destroying that connection. It fosters food insecurity on, on many levels other than just starvation. You know, people in low-income neighborhoods in the United States can't get fresh, healthy food. Up until like 120 years ago, our people were nomadic people. Our food was buffalo. But in the 1870s, um, a group of settlers went into our territory and they discovered gold in the Black Hills. So they sent out the 7th Cavalry. That's what began slowly the stealing of what lands that we had at that time in history. For a very long time, uh, our society has been in the grip of a small number of powerful and wealthy people who have followed their own interests. And this goes way back. It goes back to the origins of the European settlements on this continent. They wanted to, to civilize the people on the continent. They started massacring the buffalo in huge numbers. The buffalo was our mainstay in our food. It was, the, it, was, it, was the, it was the base of our culture. After the treaties were violated and the buffalo were killed off, our people started starving. Our people started starving. Our food that was based on buffalo was replaced with government commodities dramatically so much shifted in such a short a period of time that our bodies like even now continue to be totally in shock because we're, our, our mainstay of food is totally different and our whole way of life is totally different here. The commodity foods and the unnatural foods if you will um, do not help and in fact you, you know contribute to some of the onset of diabetes. Our peoples have a very high high rate of diagnoses. And these are like, you know, like the ravages, like the leftovers of colonialism is what you see on these reservations. Um, people hungry, people without jobs. I think that right now we're trying to reconcile that, like the, the present, the past and the future of colonialism. Today's food system is global. The same meal can be grown in Africa, packaged in Asia, and eaten in North America. But because food isn't free, it's controlled by economics. The economic system that runs today's world is based on capitalism, also known as economic globalization, global corporate capitalism, and neoliberalism. Capitalism mostly makes money off of human labor, but it also profits through the private ownership of land and resources like water and seeds. The economic globalization of food can be viewed in three parts, governments, institutions, and corporations. There are over 190 countries in the world, each with their own government, that makes decisions about who has land to farm, what food to export and import, and how to spend public money, like on education or healthcare. 
Governments can also create trade deals such as NAFTA, which privatize Mexico's public farmland. Governments are influenced by the corporate interests of their own country, but there are outside forces too. The World Bank and International Monetary Fund, or IMF, are global financial institutions that work together to loan money to different countries. But when a country borrows money from the World Bank, the IMF has rules the country must follow, such as 1. Cut funding for public education and healthcare. 2. Buy a certain amount of food from other countries even if the borrowing country already grows enough food. 3. Stop or decrease all subsidy money given to farmers to help them compete in the global market. But this rule does not apply to the United States. Let's say it costs $2 for both a small farmer in Haiti and the Cargill Corporation in America to grow a pound of corn. The U.S. government could give Cargill $1 for each pound of corn. But the Haitian farmer can't get any government money. The U.S. corporation can then sell its pound of corn for $2 and make a $1 profit. But because the Haitian farmer doesn't get any subsidies, she has to sell her corn for $3 to make the same $1 profit. Most people have to buy whatever food is cheapest, so the majority buy the corporation's cheaper, subsidized corn. But the Haitian farmer can't compete and goes broke. 4. The borrowing country must lower wage controls and stop environmental regulations. Companies can then pay workers barely enough to survive and ignore environmental destruction that affects farming, like deforestation and soil erosion. 5. Another IMF rule? Make public lands private. The World Trade Organization, or WTO, is another global institution. It mainly acts as a court to rule on disagreements between countries about trade. Its decisions and proceedings are usually secret and not disclosed to the public or media. No one is elected to the WTO, or the IMF, or the World Bank, so the public has no say in their actions. The third part of this international economic system is the corporation. Because selling food is a way to make money, corporations try to make the most money they can, even if it means that people will starve. Often assisted by the global institutions and governments, the food industry can roam the world in search of the cheapest labor, land, and resources in order to make the biggest possible profit. One of the reasons why hunger has increased is because we have not addressed the root causes of hunger. Hunger is caused in a country like United States because people don't have living wage jobs. The situation for the middle class is becoming less tolerable as a result of capitalism and the profit motive. Nearly half the Americans who responded to a recent national survey said rising food prices have become a real hardship. The whole field of genetic engineering of food crops, you know, is part of the system of industrialized agriculture. And they keep trying to promote it as a way of, quote, ending hunger. I am just a farmer out here. I was a seed corn dealer for about 10 years, too. And of course, when the technology of the genetically engineered corn started hitting the market and the beans. I was the first ones out here. We were selling it, of course, and I used it also. You were supposed to end up with a healthier grain product at the end of the year. That was what we were told. And when we started feeding that crop in the fall of 2000, we were experiencing a huge reproductive problem in our hogs. These animals would appear to be pregnant. They thought they were pregnant. They acted like they were pregnant and they basically, their bellies were full of bags of water. And this was happening to about 80% of my sow herd. In fact, I'm out of business because of it. We finally determined that it was the corn was the source of this estrogen activity that we were coming from. Contacted the company, Garst, they came out, took some samples of the corn in the fall of 2001 and said, well, we'll investigate this and see, but we don't see how this could be a problem. And after that, they refused to take my phone calls. Well, it took probably four to five months to find one media, one paper that was, uh, if you will, brave enough to run this and incur the wrath of the industry. So we had phone calls from Nebraska, Minnesota, Michigan, Illinois, and Missouri. 
from farmers experiencing the same sort of problems. Now, if we look at the animal studies, animals fed genetically modified crops, developed potentially precancerous cell growth in the digestive tract, smaller brains, livers, and testicles, partial atrophy of the liver, damaged immune system, lesions in the stomach, liver and kidneys, higher blood sugar levels, problems in the development of blood cells, inflamed kidneys, heavier livers, and twice the number of deaths compared to those that were fed non-GM. But the general consumer does not know this. They just assume that what's coming off of the shelves are safe and pure, and it's been tested forever. Tyrone Hayes was first hired in 1997 by a company that later became agribusiness giant Syngenta. I was approached by the manufacturer and asked to study the effects of atrazine, uh, the herbicide, on frogs. And after I discovered that it interfered with male development and caused uh, males to turn into females to develop eggs, the company tried to prevent me from publishing and from discussing that work with other scientists outside of their panel. And eventually it even led to things like threats of violence. Um, Tim Pasteur, for example, before I would give a talk, would, uh, would literally threaten, whisper in my ear that he could have me lynched. As far as the government itself, yeah, it's corporate run. I mean, and the USDA is, is probably the worst one. Anyone will tell you. We have a strong relationship with all the companies uh, that are dealing with something involving agriculture. Uh, Monsanto serves on some of our advisory committees. Oftentimes, we're regulating those companies. Biotechnology is, uh, you know, in various stages of acceptance globally. We feel it is safe. The mission of the Foreign Agriculture Service is really to help promote the export of U.S. agricultural products. A large portion of our corn production and our soybean production is genetically engineered. Organic farming is totally different. That means absolutely no pesticides, fertilizers, or whatever. It just has to be grown naturally. The FDA policy claims that the agency is not aware of any information showing that these foods were different the policy, it turns out, was overseen by Monsanto's former attorney, who later became their vice president. And the agency was under instructions from the White House to promote the biotech industry. Well, FDA is a part of the Department of Health and human services. And it's, it's structured very much like a corporation. So I'm the CEO. We approved our first bioengineered foods in the United States in 1993. The total volume of the food supply, the majority of it would be bioengineered. It's our job to make sure they're safe. Monsanto's uh, vision is abundant food and a healthy environment. And I, I think that says a lot about our company. It makes economic sense to farmers or they wouldn't be doing it. The conclusion has been is that round, for example, soybeans, Roundup Ready soybeans are not significantly different from any other soybeans. You talk to Dr. Crawford, Dr. Crawford seen any documented cases of ill effects of him eating GM foods and he is the commissioner, acting commissioner of our Food and Drug Administration. To my knowledge they don't exist. Now organic food is great, it, it's no better nor worse than conventionally raised foods, um, but it, 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 you know it, 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 you, that doesn't measure in things like taste. And you know I take the point, and I eat organic food, not exclusively, but you know quite a bit. So I don't. I'm not talking about that. Biotechnology is regulated uh, by governments. The corporations try to oversee themselves too. It's a system of increasing and uh, securing profits for the corporations like Monsanto and the big food corporations that own the seeds, own the patents, that make farmers keep coming back to them and paying more money each year.
Where are all these people that have suffered harmful effects of GM crops? Where are they? Ten years, a billion acres. We eat it every day in this country. And do we see people jumping out of windows and falling over dead? Have you seen those? Punjab is a land of very proud farmers. And when a farmer cannot make a living through their dignity and their work, the trauma and shock is too much. Never does a farmer announce he's committing suicide. A farmer will go quietly to the field and drink the pesticides that got him into debt. <laughs> सरकार ने पंजाब दे किसानों को पिछे नारा देता के हरा इनकलाब लेन वास्ते आते अपने बोलो हाइब्रिड वैरायटीयां दसियां के किसानों पंजाब दे किसानों फलाने फलाने बी बी जो ते इन्हें दे बिच्छ एक ईडे मार दवाइयां बर्तो ते जो कुछ सरकार ने दसिया पंजाब दे किसानों ने वही कीता बाद पैदा बार लेन दे वास्ते जो पदान पदान दवाई है ये जी ये गवर्नमेंट जो में वाला है चीज़ नहीं खर्चे में ये 
खर्चे दुगने हो गए जी पहले पहले पैदा नहीं कुछ तेल महंगे हो गए खाद महंगी होगी एक खर्चा भाई तो ठेक के दे तो ली जमीन ले ली फसल लकड़ी नहीं जे से दी भी अच्छा गवर्नमेंट कहते करे सारा انقلاب ले आदा करे चिट्टा ले आंदा इना बीजा ब्याज महंगाई करके फार्मर्स हु आर नाउ लॉक्ड इनटू द ट्रेडमिल ऑफ केमिकल्स हैड टू नाउ बाय दीस केमिकल्स एट मार्केट रेट्स फ्रॉम कॉर्पोरेशंस so they got into indebtedness of a very high level and this was done by the world bank in a perfect timing for globalization ya la kis tarah hai ji koi sambhal ka turle ga ape hai aur koi jaan ka tan pinda na pya hunda koi koi kharch ka mare pi gaya koi kise lut pi gaya koi kise lut pi gaya even main jab kise nu ke kahunga main 3 lakh rupya dena tha ki utha ji ke tarah rukenge ki keda anki banda rokda ji ya sun कीड़ा भाई कोई उधर टपा के उधर टपा गया और बंदा टपा देगा कीड़ा भाई बच्चा चिंता करेगा और की और टपा नहीं सकता ना किसी ने दस बच्चा आओ हाँ जी यही फिर अपना कर्जा मुड़िया नहीं दो थले भी उन्होंने कर्जा पक में मुड़ा जमीन है वो अपनी बिक चली है You know, I think we all have an interest in alleviating hunger and poverty. But I think the farmers in India, though, have also been very um, uh, sort of uh, um, sort of angry um, with so many other things that have been happening in India. Well, look, I mean, globalization, as such, is not either good or bad. Uh, I remember my team was just at the World Bank on Monday on a meeting on biotechnology and what's the role of the World Bank in alleviating hunger and poverty in the developing countries. As a developing country, you can do your best in order to take advantage of it or you can just sit and blame. Everyone knows that the green revolution was a wonderful thing. I think the easiest way to explain globalization is is it's saying it's it's opening up communication in all sorts of areas particularly in economic globalization the power tends to lie with the transnational corporations uh, even beyond oftentimes the power that that lies in in particular governments it incorporates the whole world into one economy and that means transnational corporations like Cargill Archer Daniels Midland who are able to deliver food products into local economies around the world below what it costs local farmers to produce driving millions of farmers off the land around the world into urban slums and into hunger and poverty hunger and poverty are getting worse as a result of the so called neoliberal economics followed by the IMF and the World Bank and the WTO and big multinational corporations and the rich country governments all of whom are kind of in cahoots promoting this economic model no outside interference in the market is tolerated therefore you cannot argue that let's say access to food access to healthcare access to education are a human right fundamental problem is an economic system based on profit corporate profit and when you have an economic system based on corporate profit you are ensuring that there will be a class of poor you are ensuring that things that will be done in society will only be done if they are profitable hey, what can you tell me about the free enterprise system uh that's the american way of life so that you know you have prices that are you know like free market prices rather than being government controlled with well, that that was the beginning of our republic that's alexander hamilton's he's the he's the one he did it i knew he did it. <laughs> the agriculture that is poisoning the earth and poisoning people and killing people is 50 men's little game the basic mission is as i said to try to help developing countries to help themselves in fighting poverty I happen to believe that we have benefited immensely from trade. I think we will continue to benefit from trade. The United States is the single 
most powerful shareholder. You know, free trade agreements are, are, are always controversial. If you and I went out and carried out a robbery or murdered someone, each of us would be guilty. On the other hand, if we do it as part of a corporation, we're not, because there's limited liability, and that's granted by the state. This whole system of corporate globalization uh, also is highly dependent on the military. in the Philippines, farmers in the south are demanding justice after police opened fire on unarmed protesters, killing at least three farmers and leaving dozens more wounded. In Brazil, a missa lembrou o dia 16 a desapropriação de fazendas na região de Eldorado dos Carajás. A polícia militar do Pará foi acionada para liberar a estrada e no confronto 19 trabalhadores rurais foram. In Peru, a farmer has been shot dead after police opened fire on protesters taking part in a month-long campaign. There is a war going on in the countryside with the use of paramilitaries. The corporations are are collaborating with paramilitaries to expand their, their monocultures. Because farmers protested, they were attacked and killed. It wasn't just Goldman, it was Goldman, and it was Bayer, and it was AIG, and it was Lehman, it was Deutsche, it was all across the board, J.P. Morgan Chase, their speculation and their restructuring of these commodity markets pushed 250 million new people into food insecurity and starving and brought the world total up to over a billion people. As billions of people starved, they used that money to make billions of dollars for themselves. There are food riots in more than 30 countries. People were on the street and and asking, you know, for the um, um, so for the state who um, you know felt the price, you know, of the of the food and especially the, the rice near to the palace, where the UN, you know, are you know trying to um, to to give them gas, you know, shooting, shooting, okay. Six or seven people, you know, have been killed in Port-au-Prince. Uh, during these four days, MSF has received more than 160 blessed, so 40 per ball. During the food crisis of 2008 and 2011, while billions of people could not afford to eat, 
Archer Daniels Midland's profits rose 42 percent. Deer's profits increased by 55 percent. Cargill's profits rose 86 percent. Monsanto's profits rose 100 percent. Mosaic's profits rose 1,134 percent. Bunge's profits increased 1,964 percent. And ExxonMobil, the biggest supplier of oil for the global transport of food, reported its highest profits in the history of the company. What you see today uh, has been seen before, and you need some historical perspective in order to understand that there have been other periods in history when people have felt discouraged, uh, when movements seemed not to exist or seemed weak, and yet what history shows you is the dynamic of the progression of a social movement which at certain times in history lead to change. We shall not, we shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved just like a tree standing by the water. We shall not be moved. We're fighting for our freedom. We shall not be moved. We're fighting for It all starts at the grassroots, first of all. Grassroots means uh, basically coming from the people, especially the poor, organizing on their own without any aid or guidance from governments or foundations or corporate sponsorship, from the power of people and not from the power of money. Just like a tree standing by the water, we shall not be moved. The MST in Brazil, landless workers movement, they've done more than almost anybody else to eradicate hunger in South America. Forcing the state through sit-ins and blockades and marches to liberate resources for their alternative model. More than a million people have taken over more than eight million hectares of, of idle land that used to belong to absentee wealthy landlords who weren't using it for anything and have now been turned into productive uh, family farms. No último cadastramento realizado pelo MST no Pontal do Paranapanema, 20 mil famílias de sem terra se inscreveram. Em média, 20 novas famílias chegam todos os dias ao acampamento, trazendo materiais para construir seus barracos. E o caráter político é porque a luta pela terra e reforma agrária é parte de um processo de luta por transformação social mais profunda, por mudanças no modelo agrícola que no nosso entendimento hoje não atende às necessidades do povo pobre, principalmente dos pequenos agricultores e sem terras do nosso país. Não vem para ganhar a terra porque algum líder bondoso vai lhe dar a terra. Vem consciente de que eles precisam lutar pela terra. E a luta depende de uma organização, de uma força. O verde é este, toma madeira, trato de morte. Outra bandeira, fala certeira, vinda do norte. We did discover that in the process of talking about women's rights, we could not move 
unless and until we started ensuring that we were empowering women. And uh, we do so through our food security uh, program. They are free, therefore, when they are economically empowered to walk out and feel you know, able to support themselves. They are able to stand on their own without depending on their men. We wanted to identify ourselves as women, that women can work as hard, even more harder than men, to grow food and food not only the nation, women feed the world. We provide uh, maize seed, cassava cuttings because they are drought resistant and that uh, uh, it doesn't need uh, uh, fertilizers, chemical uh, uh, treatment. My main job is to mobilize the women and sensitize them in what women in agriculture is all about. We go out, uh, go out to the rural areas and calling the women for a meeting. And then uh, we explain to the women what we're all about and um, tell them that we're there to help them feed themselves, to sustain themselves and their families so that they don't have the dependency syndrome on their husbands. We try to empower the women. In Zambia Alliance of Women, we talk about gender and we do a lot of training at community level. Uh, and uh, uh, in gender, we talk about partnership, real partnership between men and women. Yes, the meetings are helpful because when we meet, we take one for farming, then agroforest, also HIV AIDS. Yes, we are all practicing organic farming. To some extent, it's difficult, it's not easy to be a farmer, a single parent as I am since my husband passed away in 2001. So I was left with six children. So I had to struggle, do my farming properly, so that I could raise some income for the children, school fees and uniforms and so on. So where now, uh, I was taught how to maintain the, the land or soil fertility and how to make compost, how I can maintain my farm to the standard where uh, it would give me a proper yield. The entire farm is declared organic. When you are adequately trained as a farmer, then you are able to survive. Today we are also faced with the, the issues of GMO. You're talking about chemically or genetically modified uh, organisms. If we depend on GMOs, we do not know what long-term impact it has. My, my, my forefathers, my what, I've never heard of this GMO. Why should the America come now to say GMO is going to finish hunger in, in Africa? For instance, uh, a situation where a tomato is, you know, injected with another gene from a fish, how can a tomato definitely behave like fish? It's, we don't understand that. But for one person, the Monsanto director, to come and draw our life, our, 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 our well-being, of you know, uh, we don't want. We don't want. We don't want. Yes, and in fact, Zambia has said no to GMO. Eventually, uh, we want to make the point that uh, GMO has no base in Africa. No to Dapont USA, no to Monsanto USA, no to Switzerland, uh, Singenta, whatever. No! They should not control this world. We need to uphold the integrity of our seed. To hell with him, Santo. <laughs> <laughs> Desde la 
histórica luna donde el sol de tu bravura le puso cerco a la muerte. Realmente yo fui el primero de mi familia que salió de, de mi pueblo para venir a, a Estados Unidos. Y eso fue debido a las políticas implementadas por, eh, por este país, por Estados Unidos. Después de NAFTA, uh, México no exporta más eh, granos, pero sigue exportando México ahora. Pero ahora sigue exportando solamente mano de obra barata para los Estados Unidos. ¿Un cuánto vamos a tener para ganar el, como 50 dólares? Tenemos que piscar 200, no, dos toneladas, dos toneladas y media para ganar 50 dólares. Deshace el precio de la cubeta, dice que está desde el año 1978. El precio está a 40 centavos y hasta hoy día que estamos, seguimos ganando igual a 40 centavos. Para, para tener esos tomates bonitos y limpios en diferentes mercados que tienen. Cuando antes la coalición todavía, la coalición no, no estaba funcionando, o sea que la coalición no existía. Un día golpearon a un trabajador por ir a tomar agua. La coalición se empezó a formar. La coalición la empezamos básicamente un grupo como de ocho personas. Eh, éramos una mezcla de lo, de lo que es la comunidad de Imokeli, haitianos, mexicanos y guatemaltecos. Eh, y por eso es que fuimos nosotros mismos los trabajadores que, que decidimos organizarnos. Fue cuando se hizo la huelga, eh, una huelga de hambre por seis compañeros eh, de 30 días. Y eso fue lo que trajo más atención así al problema de, de, de Imokali, de los trabajadores, y tra trajimos más apoyo también de gente de afuera. The Student Farm Workers Alliance is a national network of students and youth organizing in solidarity with the farm workers of the Coalition of Immokali Workers. I think that our model is good because we don't assume that we know everything. We take our leadership from the group that is leading this movement. One of our major, major successes was during the four-year Taco Bell boycott. Over 300 universities were involved, over 50 high schools, and we were successful in removing 25 Taco Bell restaurants or preventing them from opening. The CIW has a really extensive um, anti-slavery campaign, and it, it does this through many ways. One of them is through education. And another thing that the coalition does is a lot of uh, victim assistance. Hasta el día de hoy seguimos teniendo reuniones cada miércoles con la comunidad aquí en ahora aquí en el nuevo centro. De esta manera con estos volantes vamos haciendo las juntas comunitarias. Vamos invitando a toda la comunidad a que participe, a saber acerca de la campaña, acerca de nuestros derechos, acerca de todo lo que venimos realizando con la comunidad. Eh, tenemos nuestra propia estación de radio, que tiene apenas eh, cuatro años, que la iniciamos. Es otro modo de entrar a, mi, a miles de hogares aquí en, en la comunidad de una, de una sola vez. El grupo de mujeres este, son por dos horas. Se habla una hora sobre nuestros derechos nosotros en diferentes lugares, en los trabajos. Entonces, y la otra hora es este, aprender inglés. Se atienden a personas como muchas veces vienen golpeadas, tenemos cuartos ahí donde podemos atender. Y todo esto esperamos que algún día estos abusos desaparezcan, estos abusos ya no existan dentro de la industria agrícola. No, no esperar que la solución viene de, de un líder o de una persona, sino de la misma comunidad. Moving back to the traditional foods um, has not only helped 
people, I think, physically, but also spiritually, you know, a recapturing of our old ways. And ultimately, I believe that's what Whiter's Land Recovery is about, not only restoring land to our peoples, but also restoring natural food systems. We really don't want all that what genetically engineered wild rice they're coming up with. We don't want that introduced around on the reservation. We do a diabetic program, Mino Micho, where we once a month we deliver uh, maple syrup, wild rice, jellies, uh, whole and pure foods is, we're trying to introduce back into the community and a lot of the people on our program are elders where they had no income for the food that they need to get by. The ones in particular struggling with type 2 diabetes. Um, I think this, the program started out with 120 individuals that we brought um, native foods to and now we're serving between 175 and 180. We uh, till up community gardens for people in the spring. Last year I think it was like 300 gardens that, and get them actively doing something where they promote a healthier lifestyle. They also gave out seeds. The way food is nowadays, I, I like the idea of having vegetables without no kind of chemicals on them. And so basically, I just you know, like fresh, clean, good vegetables. I think it would be one of the most important things we could ever do if we was to you know, get these organic gardens going. We could wipe those commodities right off the map here if we was to even have these, these organic gardens going around. Self-sufficiency is important. I guess historically, um, within the past 150 years, we have been made to rely upon the government for whatever we need. I just guess there comes a time when uh, you gotta start doing things for yourself. and try and help other people do the same. People's Grocery is a nonprofit organization uh, started by West Oakland residents to try to deal with the um, the, the limited access to uh, nutritious and healthy food. With that, um, we have programs in the community to help people with, uh, with that um, nutrition and education. People's Grocery is an organization based here in West Oakland um, dedicated to food justice, which to me means having access to healthy and affordable fresh produce to, for everyone in the community. We have um, youth programs, um, then we have cooking classes, um, and then of course we have our grub box, which which what you're filming today and what's going on today, and that's uh, where I come in at it. I grow the vegetables for our grub box. It's basically a box of a variety of different vegetables and produce um, that's grown locally, and each box is distributed to a family. Um, and there's a two-tiered system. Um, residents that are from here in West Oakland um, that are low income pay only $12 a box and residents outside of West Oakland or higher income residents pay $24 a box, so it offsets the cost um, for lower income residents. 
We can eat now. <laughs> it's, it's healthy now. What we do? Agriculture in Cuba before 1989 and after the revolution in 1959 uh, was highly mechanized, large farms, and it was mostly oriented towards exports to the Eastern Bloc countries and the former Socialist Bloc. Because it was using land to produce sugar and citrus for export, it was importing almost two-thirds of its food. When the Socialist Bloc crumbled, and the U.S. intensified the trade embargo. They lost most of their imported food. They lost most of their imported inputs like tractor parts and fertilizer for their large-scale chemical agriculture, and they entered into a crisis. So instead of imported pesticides, they are now using uh, biopesticides. Instead of chemical fertilizers, they're using compost. Uh, that really makes it a model for other countries because it really shows that sustainable agriculture or agroecological farming can feed an entire nation because they've overcome the food crisis. De la finca. La finca de nosotros es muy bonita. Cole, verruga, berro, la lechuga, el tomate, la yuca. La yuca es muy rica. Yo ha sido una finca muy productiva y todavía aún con los. Y nosotros producimos aquí diferentes cosas de hortalizas ¿no? y lo, lo portamos al comedor. ¿no? para que los obreros lo coman todo el mundo. Que es lo que tenemos aquí por el momento, entonces tenemos también otra área incluida el ganado, la leche al exil, al Estado, ecológica también, es la, más que, la parte más fundamental. Y ya usted ve cómo se ve el campo en este momento, se ve bastante bien. ¿Eh? El abono orgánico, y todo se siembra y todo cultivar con cariño y amor la planta y todo lo que vayamos a hacer. Era eh, partidario, que decía que era de un latifundista y luego con la ley de reforma agraria me dieron dos caballerías ¿eh? que las trabajaba porque las trabajaba, me dio derecho, <risa> me dio derecho a adquirirla. En este trabajo de permacultura dentro de la agricultura urbana, que ha sido muy útil para toda la población por la forma fácil de adquirir alimentos con poco gasto de moneda por, y con mucho alimento que se, principalmente se logra con mucho amor. Alimentos con amor saben mucho mejor que alimentos comprados. What are the elements in, about Cuba or in Cuba that allowed them to make a transition so quickly and so successfully without having everything fall apart? One, protection from the global economy. Farmers couldn't have gotten fair prices in Cuba uh, if Cuba had been integrated into the global economy. And then on the inside, access to land. The fact that there was no longer any landowning class, the revolution had occurred. There's a triangle of three other key factors. Up here is the availability of agroecological alternatives. 
Another factor was the, was the Cuban state being willing to support the transition. And the last element, which I actually think was the most important in the case of Cuba, is that it's a highly organized society. In rural areas, farmers are organized into cooperatives, communities are organized into local very participatory local government. When people are highly organized and connected to each other, then it's possible for the good example to spread very quickly through organized networks. Even while the system has some serious shortcomings, the fact is they have achieved uh, made huge strides in eradicating hunger. Habría que ver y reconocer que existe allí una un poder que se ha enquistado en, en, en tal no político. Creemos necesario que tiene que existir otra política mucho más horizontal y mucho menos vertical. So while uh, by no means is Cuba the perfect country or is the Cuban government the perfect government, I think they've done a lot of things well and I think they should be recognized for that. Pueblo cubano masivamente que supo soportar las escaseces de todo tipo y sobreponerse a esa situación. Porque existe otro que... y hermanas, bienvenidos a las montañas del sureste mexicano. Latinoamérica. Como mexicanos, pues, nuestro derecho es la tierra de cultivar y reservar todo eso. Tanto la gente por orgánicas. Nosotros tenemos una sociedad de 1700 socios y ahorita ya encontramos el precio el precio justo, porque nos van a pagar un poco ya más el precio de café. Their concept of autonomy is becoming independent of the, of the larger economy and of the, the corporations that sell chemicals, that sell seeds, and producing their own food in a more self-sufficient way. Son las cosas que más importantes que trabajemos nosotros so solos, como indígenas, pues trabajar solo, cultivar solo. Solamente nosotros, pues, estamos gobernando, pues. Que se muere de no respetar, Pachamama te veo tan triste, Pachamama me pongo a llorar. As in the case of the Zapatistas, but not just the Zapatistas, most of the indigenous movement wants their own local community, traditional institutions, to take charge of local governance and education and health care and agricultural extension, whatever it is. And they don't want the national state to bother them anymore because they're sick of it after 500 years. They want the state to go away and leave them alone. In the mid-90s, they definitely made a splash and embarrassed the hell out of the Mexican government, which knows today that it cannot defeat the Zapatistas militarily. Nobody will recognize them as the, uh, the, the, the force behind a lot of changes that have taken place in Mexico and the world. <laughs> It's a period for hopelessness as long as you allow the dominant powers to decide what life will be in the future.
I have no doubt that we can stop violence in the world, that we can stop hunger and poverty in the world. There will be clashes, we know that. But they are prepared, they are educated. They will not each be criminalized in isolation. In many respects, there's more solidarity now than there ever was in the past. Ignorance can be overcome. Propaganda can be overcome. Pues los que están en sufrimiento en otros países, pues que organicen a defender sus derechos. Que junten pues para que algún día viven en una, en una buena condición de vida. Así como nosotros pues. Y por eso es la única forma. Nosotros tenemos derechos a la vida y vida digna. When the world has gone crazy And it's all becoming clear When they're gunning down our comrades And it seems the end is near As they're loading up the launchers For the tear gas grenades We can take off our bandanas And kiss behind the barricades When it's madness all around and you can see this at a glance We will sing and we will cry We will laugh and we will dance As they shout their marching orders Beneath the helicopter blades We shall seize the moment For a kiss behind the barricades They will try to break our spirit And at times they may succeed but our love for the world is stronger than their greed. When the building is surrounded and hope begins to fade, 
In my final hour, a kiss behind the barricades. As the movement grows, there will be hills and bends. But at the center of the struggle are your lovers and your friends. And the more we hold each other up, the less we can be swayed. Here's to love and solidarity and a kiss behind the barricades.